by any measure, Marc Messier is one of the greatest hockey players ever. Messier wheels down the right side. Over the Islander blue line. Messier moves through the defense. He scores! Oh, did he handle the biscuit! He was an unstoppable force for one of the NHL's most dominant dynasties, helping the great one lift four Stanley Cups with the Edmonton Oilers, and then winning another after Wayne Gretzky was traded. Kevin and I are roommates, and we said, well, let's go there and win this one for Gretz, and uh, if he's watching, this one's for you, big guy. Despite all of that success, Messier may be best known for this moment as captain of the New York Rangers, the guarantee. This was headlines on all the sports sections in New York. Mark Messier said, we will win game six. With his team facing elimination in the 94 playoffs, Messier guaranteed a win and led the Rangers to its first Stanley Cup in 54 years. Do you believe it? He said we will win game six. He has just picked up the hat trick. Marc Messier is the only player in NHL history to captain two different teams to a Stanley Cup victory. And the league has named its leadership award after him. Now he's writing about it in his upcoming memoir, No One Wins Alone. I caught up with Marc Messier earlier this week near his home in Greenwich, Connecticut. Marc Messier, thank you very much for doing this. Great to be with you. Now, lots of people in Canada obviously know who you are, and we just had that uh, little introduction, but just in case there's somebody who doesn't know who Marc Messier is, how would you describe yourself to them? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I've spent a lifetime trying not to talk about myself, as difficult as it is, and here I am writing a book and trying to talk about myself. So, um, I don't know, curious, um, passionate, uh, wants to have a good time. Okay, so you didn't use the word leadership. I thought that would be part of, of the description because anytime someone talks about you, obviously Hall of Fame hockey player, but they talk about you as being this great leader. Tell me about that. How did that come about, Marc Messier leader? Well, interesting. Uh, as a young boy, I had a father who played hockey, so I got an early lesson in hockey on and off the ice and the psychology behind winning uh, through my father, um, watching him coach and watching him mentor young uh, players uh, at the junior level, uh, and then being around great players, great leaders myself uh, from the time that I uh, came into the league and, and to the time I finished, I was uh, very fortunate to be around great people who I learned a lot from. So famously, you're the only player in the history of the NHL to be a captain of two Stanley Cup winning teams, Edmonton and the Rangers, but you were not the captain of the Oilers for quite a while because Gretzky was. And one of the really interesting things about the book to me is to get your ice level and dressing room level insight into Wayne Gretzky. So I think a lot of people watching, you know, they know he's a great player. They've seen the statistics, but they don't know him the way you know him. What, what is it that made him great? Well, I think the God-given talent that he, he, he was given, there's no question about it. He was born to be a hockey player in every way. His will to win and to be the best player ever was evident to everybody that was uh, around him and played on the team with him. There very rarely in life can you look at a guy that's uh, eight days younger than you and use him as an example uh, from leadership perspective on and off the ice. His focus was unparalleled. Uh, he was in a completely different state of mind than I was at 18 years old. And, uh, and I got the luxury of sitting across the best player on the planet maybe the best athlete in the last hundred years for 12 years and look across at him and watch and learn from him. I would have been a fool not to look at him and, and, and take something from him. And he made me a better uh, uh, player, uh, not only from a skill standpoint, but from a preparation, commitment, uh, focus standpoint as oh. well. Well, enough about him. Let's talk about you some more. I brought this book along, speaking of leadership. Have you read this, Ty Domi's book? I, I have read, read excerpts of it, yes. Yeah, so I, I was reading through it the other day, and then early on, he spends four or five of pages of his story talking about you. And I just want to read one uh, of the paragraphs here. So this is Ty Domi saying, I looked to Messier as an example of what it meant to be a true leader and how I should treat the people around me. I took his words to heart, and I saw his actions as an inspiration for how I could work on my skills, but also he says, develop myself into a more well-rounded player. Uh, Mark Messier made a lasting difference in my life. And it's not just Ty Domi. Lots of people talk about the impact you had on them in their, as a player, but also as a person. When you hear that, what do you think? Well, I think uh, for me, myself, I recognized very early on that I wasn't the kind of player that could carry a team uh, by myself. And I knew that if you wanted to win, it was going to be important to have everybody buying into the culture and the vision that's been created uh, by the team and the players themselves. Um, I wanted everybody to feel part of it, uh, no matter 
what role they played on the team. And everybody has to feel that if, if uh, anything less than their best is not good enough. And it's the totality of the team effort that really uh, you rely on in order to win and surrounding yourself with uh, people that are just as focused. You know, you hear people uh, ask athletes their welcome to the major league moment. So think back to whether it's 17 years old in the WHA or 18 in the NHL. What was the moment where you thought to yourself, man, I am in the big leagues now? I remember uh, playing exhibition games in smaller venues around Canada. And then our first uh, National Hockey League game was in Chicago Stadium. This hockey game tonight about to get underway. Messier playing the left side. And when they played the national anthem with that uh, organ and the crowd going crazy, we looked at each other. We couldn't hear ourselves think. We looked at each other and said, wow, welcome to the NHL. Oh. So the game is a lot different than it was before. Um, a lot less fighting than there was before. You were a guy who was a tough, aggressive hockey player. You also say in your book, you talk about one of the sort of moments uh, on the ice was an encounter between you and the Montreal Canadiens Hall of Fame defenseman Larry Robinson. <laughs> Uh, tough guy, skilled, a little bit bigger than you, a little bit older, and uh, he elbowed you, you got mad, and you held your, your stick up like you were ready to swing it. And, and Robinson, you point out in the book, kind of recognized that uh, maybe this is not the time to move in any closer to, to Mark Messier. And, oh, it looked like an ugly situation was going to develop there, and the officials got in. But you also say in your book, that you've thought a lot about that moment and, and you wonder how much would you have done to win? What's the answer to that question? I think there's been a few moments in my career that, uh, that I wrestled with that and, and it uh, actually frightened me <laughs> at times <laughs> because I didn't know where the boundary was for me personally. Mark Messier's motto is live every day like it's your last and that's sort of the way he plays. He is such a fierce competitor and that's how most players in the National Hockey League, I'm sure, perceive Mark Messier like this guy is way out of control. How can he get me into the building because my stick broke? Because he fell down and my stick broke? Is that why? Is that why? Right or wrong, obviously made some mistakes in my career that I look back on and cringe. Uh, but uh, I guess the era that I grew up in w was different than it is now. Uh, it's, you know, there it was, it was more survival. Uh, you had to earn respect on the ice in different ways. The reality is, is that uh, you know, I, I don't know where that limit was, and that's not a good thing, I guess. <laughs> so one of the cool things about being an oiler in those days is you were surrounded, not just by superstars, but all of you guys were born in 60, 61, 62. So you guys were, you grew up together. You were teenagers together. You were in your early 20s together. What was your favorite part of that, or what was a moment where you kind of thought, this is, you know, this is so much fun? The favorite moment was, is the journey that began with all of us that first year. Through the year, we became, like you talk about, really good friends, the core group of guys, and Kevin, and then next year, Paul came, and Grant, and pretty soon, you know, uh, you know we were a brotherhood that uh, were on, you know, marching on a journey together, and we knew that, uh, you know, Wayne was gonna do special things in his career. There was no doubt about that, that he was gonna win a Stanley Cup at some point, so, we all said, we just got to figure out a way to how to chip in and support them, and hopefully we could win a Stanley Cup one day, and sure enough, we are able to go on and win four together. Yeah, and uh, four together, but then five in all. There was that one more Stanley Cup after Gretzky had been traded. One thing I often hear hockey players talk about, and I think I've heard Wayne Gretzky say this in an interview, is that one of the things you miss when your career is over is just not being in the dressing room anymore, not being part of that team. Do, do you miss hockey? Well, I think... He's right, and you know it's it's an interesting. There, there's a real kind of um, euphoric feeling when you, when the final whistle goes and everybody piles on the ice and you lift the Stanley Cup, and then about a week later there's a real lull, and it's I, I wouldn't say it's a it's a sadness or but it's a it's a little bit of a depressive feeling because you're not going to the dressing room. And what you what I realized what I came to realize really is is it's those special moments all year long that make the journey so incredibly rewarding and memorable. And of course, we all remember lifting the Stanley Cup, but it's, it's just what Wayne talked about, the dressing room banter, the travel. Uh, you know, those are the things that, uh, that are part of the journey that you really remember that are so, uh, so memorable and, uh, and uh, you know, make it, make it so worthwhile. Well, you got a chance to raise the Stanley Cup six times, and, uh, and it's a pretty impressive career. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you so much.